Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody came to lift up the name of Jesus on this morning? For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runner therein. Hallelujah. We came to give thanks on this morning. Anybody came to give thanks? Hallelujah. We thank God for bringing us to this last Sunday in this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking for great things in 2022. Hallelujah. 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 said push pray until something happens and that's what we're going to do on this morning let us pray lord jesus christ dear god we thank you for safe arrival on this morning we thank you lord because it's once again that you've allowed us to come into this house of prayer to give your name praise and to give your name thanks but god right now we pause to say thank you yes Lord God, we want to thank you because you've been so good to us all year long. Lord God, you brought us safely, oh God, to this last Sunday, and for that we say thank you. Lord God, there were so many that started out with us, oh God, but they don't stand with us on this morning, and God, for that we say thank you. Lord God, this is a day of rejoicing, God. oh God, because if it had not been for you on our side, Lord God, where would we be? So God, we say thank you on this morning. Lord God, so many times you took us around the enemy's snare on this morning. Oh God, so many times you caused death to stop uh, in his tracks. Uh, oh God, so many ways you've made, so many doors. Uh, oh God, you open for us. And God, for that, we say thank you. Uh, oh God, so many times you've healed our body. Uh, oh God, so many times you opened up a window of heaven uh, and you poured us out a blessing. Uh, oh God, time after time when we were so undeserving. God, you still so fit to bless us. And God, for that, we say thank you. Oh, God, is with a grateful heart of the, oh, this morning that we come before your throne uh, to give your name thanks and to give your name praise. Uh, to tell you thank you for another day, oh, God. Uh, to tell you thank you, oh, God, uh, for touching us once again. Uh, Lord God, we bless your name on this morning. Uh, and God, we ask for a move in this house on this morning. Uh, oh, God, we ask for revival in this house on this morning. Oh God, we ask for restoration in this house on this morning. Oh God, we pull on heaven this morning, oh God. And we say, Lord, have your way in this house on this morning. Oh God, touch minds on this morning. Touch hearts on this morning. Rule on this morning, oh God. Send revival, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Touch your man's servant as he brings forth the bread of life. God, don't let us leave here like we came on this morning. Oh, God, save on this morning and deliver. Oh, God, and we'll give your name the praise. We'll give your name the honor. We decree and declare miracle signs and wonders. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. And it is so in Jesus' name. Let us remain standing for our scripture on this morning coming from the 150th Psalm and we're going to read it in concert praise ye the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness praise him with the sound of the trumpet praise him with the harp 
Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Come on, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on, get out of yourself. There was no goodness of our own, but God brought us. God kept us. He preserved us. He protected us. He healed us. He restored us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let everything that have breath praise him and welcome to the live stream coming from the Sanctuary of Refuge Temple. Come on, turn up the volume and let's have church. Come on, put those hands together. The song says the Lord is high above the heavens and his voice above all nations. If you believe that, I get you to give God praise. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory is above all nations. And his glory above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory is above all nations. And his glory above all nations. I say the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory is above all nations. And his glory above all nations. I say the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory is above all nations. And his glory above all nations. Come on and give God the highest praise. Acknowledge in my way. And all the people say, Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Just look at yourself. Just look all around you. Hallelujah. You're still in the number on this morning. Hallelujah. And that's enough to shout hallelujah on this morning. Hallelujah. That's enough to just open up your mouths. That's enough to just clap those hands. That's just enough to just give him glory. Hallelujah. Because he's been good. Hallelujah. 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 Do you love the Lord on this morning? How many of you love the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. The song says, Lord, I love you. Because he's the great I am. Is he the great I am in your life? Hallelujah. Just for who you are? 
him for his goodness we we thank the Lord for his mercy we thank the Lord for allowing us to see the last Sunday in 2021 It is amazing that when we look around and kind of figure out who's still here with us, there's so much of a multitude that has gone on that's not here anymore. But the Lord saw fit. The Lord saw fit to give you one more day. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't take it lightly. I'm not uh, one of those individuals that say I'm supposed to be here. But I am grateful to the Lord. I'm grateful that he kept me. I'm grateful that I'm still saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I don't know about you, but just look at somebody and say, I'm still here. <laughs> we are rapidly approaching the uh, final hours of 2021. Amen. Uh, we prayed about it. We thought about it. We considered it, and we want to have a home. We want to have a watch night service here in the sanctuary. Those of you that choose to come, our doors will be open here in Refuge Temple at uh, 10 o'clock. Amen. We will go in prayer at 1030. Amen. And then we will go into worship. I don't know about you. I don't know any better way to start the New Year's off. I'm not talking about a New Year's resolution that you only going to keep for three or four hours. Some of you have already promised God that if you make it through to the New Year, you're going to go on a diet. <laughs> I'm preaching hard right now. You've made all kind of promises, amen, that you know you're not going to keep, amen. But me, myself, I'm just going to thank him for the opportunity to be saved in 2022. He is an awesome God. He is a great, great God. We love him for all of the great things that he's done in our lives. And to those of you that are tuning in to watch us via live stream, we praise the Lord for each and every one of you. We thank God for those of you that have turned to us through Facebook Live. Amen. God bless you to those of you that are tuning in via YouTube. God bless you as well. And to those of you that are simply 
um, just calling into our phone line to listen to it over the air. We thank God for each and every one of you. I want to personally thank you for your support over the last year, how you have been faithful listeners and watchers to our broadcast. Thank God for each and every one of you. May the Lord continue to bless you as only he can. I want you to know that we appreciate you. We're looking forward to seeing you if you are in the Columbia area on uh, uh, watch night. Amen. That's Jan excuse me, December 31st, and we will be having a time in the building. I want you to bow your heads with me. Merciful and everlasting Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for how you've been a keeper, a way maker, a heart fixer, mind regulator, all of the great attributes that you have provided for us that we might be better saints and love you even more. We thank you, God, for how you've loved us. Oh, God, for how you love us. We thank you because you have been such a wonderful God. As we look around and see all of our loved ones and friends that have not made it to this point, but you have given us the strength to be here, and we thank you for that. Now, there's a praise that rests upon our lips, amen, that we could have been counted amongst the number that lost their life, but you saw fit to keep us and to give us one more chance. Now, God, as we come together, bind up anything that's not like you, take of the spirit of jealousy and push it back into the PC of forgetfulness, amen, and push it back, oh God, because this is not a part of your house. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every family that is represented in this building. Pour out your anointing, pour out your power. Pour out your love as only you can do. My God, send your healing virtue right now. Oh God, walk down the aisles. Any afflictions that you see, oh God, do not allow them to take them in the 2022. Oh God, send deliverance, send power, majesty. Oh God, even those that have made done wrong, oh God, we want you to forgive them, oh God, and give them one more chance, oh God, to come to the knowledge of who you are and what you can do for them. We praise you and we glorify your holy name and we thank you for all of the wonderful things that you're doing. Now send the excellence of speech, oh God, the clear thought, oh God, that might be a blessing to your people. Oh God, send a word, oh God, that might encourage your people. Send a word, oh God, that might strengthen them in your mighty name. We ask these blessings and we will give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Turn with me to uh, the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter number six. Amen. I will be reading from a different translation on this morning. I will be reading from the Amplified Translation, and they will put it on the screen. And for those of you that have your smartphones, amen, I'm pretty sure that you've uh, downloaded the Bible app. Amen. And if you've downloaded the Bible app, you'll be able to find the app, the version in which I'm going to use for this morning. Say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Reading to your hearing this was, and Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouths of the lions so that they may not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also before you, O king, I have committed no crime. I want to read it again. Then Daniel spoke to the then Daniel spoke to the king, O king, live forever. My soul has by God has sent his angel and has shut the mouths of the lions so that they have no hurt, they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before thee, and also before you. O king, I have committed no crime. Before you're seated, just look at somebody in your close proximity and just say, without the testing of our faith, there can be no testimony. Without the testing of our faith. It is amazing. <laughs> When I talk to the saints, they want blessings, they want blessings, but, but nobody want to go through nothing. Amen. I have to laugh at it because yeah, we're, dest we're predestined to go through some stuff. We're going to have to go through some difficult things. And the reason why this is so important to us is over the last 22 months, 24 months, uh, we've been dealing with some testing. 
I don't know about you, amen. Some of us are afraid to shake hands with folk. And we're afraid to get close to someone. We see somebody start coughing, and we almost give them the death stare. And then before you know it, you jump up and run away. I don't know who you are. I don't know you. We go into the uh, store and people see you. They want to grab you and hug you. You got to throw the elbow up. We don't want to go through that. We've been dealing with it. We've been wrestling with it. We've been oh, handling it and just being, uh, just trusting God. Some of us are even afraid to move around. Some of us are glad that we don't have to go to work anymore. We can work from home. We have that ability that we can work at our house. We don't want to get into it. But as I begin to look at it, I, uh, I took yesterday, which is uh, that East, excuse me, I call it Easter, Christmas Day. <laughs> I'm already in April 2022. <laughs> Here it is. I'm not going nowhere, so I'll see you then. <laughs> Amen. Here it is. When I began to look at it, I took my time. I said my prayers. Amen. Watched the broadcast. Amen. And then I turned on the basketball games. Uh, Christmas Day is filled with about five games that come throughout the city. And every time they would turn to a different city, it would be a sold out crowd. Amen. Even though I know that they have put in some precautions, they've put on some measurements so that people can gather. You have to show and proof that you've had your vaccination. You still have to wear your mask. We have to do all of this. Uh, and every arena from the East Coast to the West Coast was filled with people. Amen. Filled with folks that were cheering for the New York Knicks and for the Golden State Warriors, amen, for the Milwaukee Bucks, and the list goes on and on and on uh, for the 10 teams that were playing. And I began to wonder how, as the believers, that we're afraid even to worship together, even to come into the house. I'm, I'm amazed, amen, as long as you are doing the precautionary things the God we serve also puts a protective edge around us to keep us under the blood. I was beginning to read this passage and I was beginning to look at it and begin to study it, amen, or the book of Daniel because we're preparing for our 21 day fast that will begin in January 10th and we'll go through the 30th, amen. We were looking at it and I began to search it and understand that the God I serve is an awesome God. He's a God that knows and understands everything. I noticed that as I was reading the particular texts, reading the text, amen, or reading the Bible in that book of Daniel, I began to notice something. I began to notice that the, a lot of the crimes that you see were not always sin, especially when you begin to look at Daniel's story. I began to notice that all of the crimes that were being committed were not sin. And a lot of the sins that we saw were not crimes. The sins that we saw were not crimes. Our text indicates that we are absolutely right about this. My thought process proves to me that I have some understanding of what was going on. Um, and when we begin to look at it, we see that there is some truth to it. In the sixth chapter of Daniel, the righteous man is convicted of a crime in which, not, in which there was not a sin. He was convicted of a crime and sentenced to death for something that was not a sin. We know that murder is a sin and stealing is a sin and, and adultery is a sin. And we can go on over the list that can prove what sin is. Amen. But when you begin to look at what Daniel was facing, it was not considered sin. Amen. I want you to know the Bible speaker says, be angry, but sin not. All right, what does that mean? Because some of y'all get married, y'all look like a buzzsaw. 
Well, it is, but you have to be angry. You can get angry, but sin not. There's a line that you do not cross. Do not cross to a line of profanity falling out of your mouth. Does not come to the point that you put your hands up and want to duke it out with somebody. It is not that. You are to understand that you can disagree. Amen. It's okay to disagree, but you have to learn how to deal with it afterwards. Here is Daniel was purposely uh, committed. Uh, Daniel was purposely committed to his crime because he did not wish to commit sin. He purposely did it. He purposely committed what they thought to be a crime in that day and time. Amen. It was in his mind. He would rather serve God than serve man. He did it. He committed the crime and he wished it, and he did not wish to commit sin. And this was not a crime. Daniel's deliverance from the lion's den, um, one of the most popular stories or well-known Bible stories. I believe that every child, amen, that is growing up in a house has heard the story. You've seen the colorful pictures that show the sleeping lions and Daniel standing there. Amen. Is delivered in chapter one from the confrontation of the Babylonian government and never Nebuchadnezzar the king. We understand that when you look at these particular stories, there's some power to it. There's some anointing that comes with it. Are y'all with me? Here it is. Wow. These four godly Hebrews, and we want to know that he was not alone. Amen. That him and his three brothers that came from Jerusalem that were captured and brought to Babylon, Babylon, the Babylon found themselves in a position where they had never been before. Amen. They were worshiping God in a strange land. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all can't get in prayer unless you walk into this sanctuary. Amen. But wherever I am, I'm able to pray my way out of it because that's the God that we serve. Here it is, him, Daniel, and his four friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, their Babylonian names, they delivered, they were divinely delivered in chapter one from the confrontation, and they found themselves worshiping God, while these four godly Hebrews were willing to be called by Babylonian names, and every time that you have to remember the names that we remember them by are not their Hebrew names, not the names that their father and mother gave them, but we remember Remember them by the names that the Babylonians gave them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here it is that while they are worshiping God, they give him the best praise they know how. Here again, they not only remember their names, but they begin to attend the Babylonian schools. And they even work in the Babylonian government. And they were not willing to eat, but they were not willing to eat the food served at the king's table. Okay, now you're saying, Bishop, you being primary, you're going through the basic. But I want you to understand that when you look at this, there was a stand that you have to make for God. No matter how much you try not to do it, you have to make a stand. And it's difficult in today's society to make the stand because everybody has their own mindset of what they think the scriptures mean. Yeah. Amen. Everybody's dancing, but nobody's living preaching hard right now here it is i want you to know that we came up in an era my myself i'm not talking about all of you back in the 70s and earlys where uh, speaking in tongues was not something that was considered a popular event amen they were not always speaking even though it had been falling here in america amen sisters azusa street revival that was not something that was commonly known long as you were going to church that was enough but we started hearing the word being taught that if you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, amen, and repent of your sins and be baptized, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? It's that thing that fell in Acts chapter 2. Amen. That when they began to get in one place, one accord, and there came some of the sound of heaven, the sound of rushing mighty wind that filled the house. Amen. You, I love a good prayer meeting where the Holy Ghost starts walking. Yeah, And as we begin to walk, you can feel the anointing beginning to fall. It may start over here in this corner and walk its way down all the way through the back and come up the other side and make its way up the wall. It will start to move. The Holy Ghost is like real fire. Yes, uh, I wish I had a believer in here that know what I'm talking about and say the fire still falls. 
here it is, they find that this is an important component of it. And they began to understand they had to stand them. Because of their faithfulness, God gave these men an extra measure of wisdom. That seems to be the failure of most of us today. We don't ask God for will, fail for we don't ask God for wisdom. We ask him for a new car, a new house, a new suit, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Amen. And we ask him for all of those other things. But we need to ask God for more of him. I need more, more, more. I need more of you. I need more God. Amen. I can't make it on my own. Amen. Every time Reed steps up, he messes up. But if I trust in God, he will rock me in his cradle. Amen. He will cover me. As a matter of fact, he does this like this. The scripture says he'll put goodness and mercy. They will follow me all the day. Come on, listen. Y'all don't believe that. But everywhere I walk out, everywhere I talk, amen, goodness and mercy covers me. I should be dead. I come on. But mercy stopped the bullet. Ah, mercy stopped the car. Mercy stopped the sick. Goodness and mercy follows me. Here it is, these interesting, these extra men, they were given an extra measure of wisdom. And man, they was greatly impressed the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he gave them, they gave them positions of influence and responsibility in the kingdom. If you are a child of God, there's going to be favor that's going to follow you. Oh, look at somebody say, favor's going to follow me. Uh, I feel the favor of God. Uh, walk it over me. As a matter of fact, just put your hands over your head and say the favor. <laughs> uh, uh, carry that into 2022. Favor. <laughs> favor. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would just join with me and scream it out one more time. Favor. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Somebody is operating in it right now. As a matter of fact, when you cross over to 2022, it's going with you. Amen. This is, we understand the responsibility of the kingdom. They began to use it. In chapter 2, amen, just give me some time. Once again, the God delivered Daniel and the three friends. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he could not understand and neither could any of his counselors or his wise men revealed or interpret the dream. In anger, the king commanded that the execution of all the wise men of the land, including Daniel and his friends. Amen. Sometimes you get caught in stuff. Amen. You've been living right, but you've been caught in stuff. Amen. But I want to, you know, there's not a way that, there's not a trial or tribulation that you've gone through that God has not created a way of escape. Oh, y'all don't understand that. Whatever you're going through, God has already opened the hatch door. Amen. That's going to bring you out of it. Somebody ought to scream. I'm coming out of Coming out of this. Here it is. You see it. They found themselves. Amen. They wanted, they found themselves incorporated and put into the same pot as everyone else. Amen. I was reading a story about uh, lobster. Amen. I was reading a story about lobster. They say that when you cook it loud, amen, that they scream, amen, in the pot. Amen. That when you put the hot water on them, you hear them screaming. Amen. They begin to tell us that in the article, they do not have vocal cords, so they can't scream. But there is some air that is being released from them as the steam is going. I want you to know that the God I serve is letting you know that no matter how tight or how hot the pot is, there is a way for escape for you. You are getting ready to come out. You've been going through some hell and some high waters in 2022 and 2021. But when we walk into 2022, we're going to see a whole new change of what God's about to do in our life. Look at somebody say, I believe that. I believe that. 
Here it is. We understand that there is a blessing that is being ready to bestow upon the people of God. Here it is in chapter two. We understand that these are these. He comes and brings them into a place where they've never been. Amen. And they're dealing with in his anger. He finds himself accusing everybody. Amen. Daniel learned of the king's dilemma and was able to reveal the king his dream and as the meaning of his dream, sparing his life. Amen. And the lives of his other Babylonian wives. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord and I, I need to stop. I know I need to walk through this fast a little bit, but I want you to understand, amen, that if you're really a child of God, not only do you bring yourself out of what's going on, but everybody that's around you that has faith comes along with you. Are you all understanding? If you are of like mind and you have like responsibility, you are not the only one that's going to be brought out. Amen. If you pray hard enough, you can carry somebody out of something. You can pull them out of it. Amen. But it's time for them to learn how to stand on God's word for themselves. Uh, when I was going through a trial and situation, amen, mama, and I was talking to God. No, I wasn't even talking to God. I was just talking to my mother. Amen. And she said, I'm tired. I'm frustrated by everything that's going on. She said, I'm going to stop praying for you. I said, hold it, please. Because I understood it was her prayers that kept me. But what it taught me is to get a prayer through for myself. Is there a prayer warrior in the house? Is there somebody that knows the power of prayer will change things? If you know it, open up your mouth and give him the best praise. You know how prayer still works. Prayer is the power of God. Here it is. He understands this. He reveals to them and understands. Chapter 3, amen, Nebuchadnezzar is, is created a great golden image uh, for which he, the people of all the nations were to bow in uh, bow down and worship. Amen. Daniel's three friends and, and him, amen, refused to bow down. Again, in anger, Nebuchadnezzar threatens them, amen, with death. If they do not obey his decree, refusing to obey, they were thrown in the fiery furnace. Amen. Y'all know what? If you read the story, the furnace was heated some seven times hotter than it had ever been heated. Amen. That means that everybody in the castle was sweating. Amen. Because the heat was so bad and so high. Amen. And they found themselves that they were at cooling and cool inside the flames. Here it is. We understand that while they were in this position, amen, where they found themselves relaxed. I've come to tell you that no matter how many trials and tribulations you come, if you are saved, you will learn to relax in the storm. Amen. You will relax, learn to trust in God. Sometimes anxiety comes in. Sometimes some difficult stuff begins to deal with you and you don't know whether or not you can understand it or go through it. You want to resolve it your way. But when you trust in God, Oh, he will bring you out. The hard thing is that we have to learn how to trust in God. Not trust in mama, daddy, sister, brother. But you've got to learn how to trust God that he's going to bring you out of this. And even if he does not bring you out of this, he's got something else in store that's going to be greater than where I am now. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. They found themselves being thrown into the high fiery furnace. Amen. They were thrown into this big pit. Amen. Where the heat was being heated. But in the midst of all of that, God was present. Amen. I want you to know you're not going to go through anything by yourself. Amen. I need to say this. I believe that as believers of God and believers of the Bible and believers of the word and being filled with the Holy Ghost, God prepares us for everything. There's nothing that creeps up on us. Amen. That God has not prepared you for. Amen. He has given you a scripture. He's shown you a dream. Amen. He's spoken through you in his word to let you know that I'm going to be with you through whatever your storm is. I know you've been going through hell, but God said you coming out of it. Amen. And you're going to trust me. Amen. He begins to understand, amen, that he was present and he preserves them from death. Amen. He preserves them from the fire catching hold. Amen. He preserves them from injury. There are no scars on their body. Amen. I got a scar on my body right now from a young man. Amen. Going into my grandmother's living room. Amen. Before we had central heat and air, we had an old pot, we had an old pot belly stove. Amen. That was in the middle of the 
floor that heated up the room. Amen. Y'all thought that I was a city boy. Amen. But I've got some country in me. Amen. I was in there. My grandmother and grandfather would kindle the fire. They would get some wood. Amen. And a couple of pieces of newspaper and some oak. Amen. And they would cause the fire to catch on to the kindling. Amen. And then they would put a big piece of oak in there so the whole room was hot. Amen. You would sit too close to it. It would almost burn you because it was hot. As a young man, instead of me, amen, sitting where my mother and my grandmother told me, I became to be mischievous. I think the spirit of Dennis the Menace, amen, must have been on me. Amen. And I began to walk in there and they had told me time and time again, stay away from that fire. You will get burned. But no, I didn't want to do it. Amen. And as I began to find myself in there, I messed around and let that pipe, that stove hit me on my hip. Amen. All of a sudden I heard something sizzling like bacon. Amen. I didn't know it was bacon on the oven or not. All I heard was the smell of it. Amen. But something was in me. Amen. That I was more afraid uh, God of mama and daddy and grandma because they had already told me. Then I was afraid then I was brave enough to tell them that I had been burned. Amen. I was finding myself hiding it as much as I can. I was so little that mama put me in the dub. Amen. What happened to you, boy? I started crying. I got burned. And she gave me a spanking. Here it is. I want you to know that there is something that you have to go through that's going to tell you what God is going to do in your life. Sometimes you're going to have to go through some stuff that may burn you, that may be difficult for you, that may cause you to want to throw in the towel. But if you have Hang in there. There's going to be a blessing that's going to come out of it. Look at somebody say, I believe that. I be Amen. Amen. They find that not only was the fire not touching them, amen, but the smell of smoke, amen, did not even affect them. And I push this into your mindset. Have you ever been walking in the mall or walking towards the mall and somebody in front of you was smoking a cigarette? Amen. And by the time you got there, you was saturated with their smoke. Amen. Sometimes I get in my mind that while I'm walking and somebody's smoking, that I smell it so strong that I think that if somebody sees me, they're going to smell and think that I've been smoking. That's how powerful smoke is. But when you read this text, not even the smell of smoke affected them. So whatever's around you that's trying to affect you, God has placed a covering. Favor. Oh, you better use that. I got favor. Favor is around you. Amen. Here it is. The king was so impressed. He issued a decree. He can guarantee that the Jews would have freedom in worship. Amen. You worship him enough, God's going to give you some freedom and some favor. Amen. Without hindrance, they were not allowed, no one was allowed to criticize them or to stop them from their worship service. Amen. When we get to chapter 4, it speaks of Nebuchadnezzar's deliverance. Amen. He is the one that is delivered from pride and oppression. Amen. When he for a period in his, his mind was, he had lost his mind. He was looking for sanities. That he sanity that he could understand. He was a kingdom had been removed from him. You know him. He began to think that he was more than he should. He began to think of himself as being the control of everything. Amen. He was the one. I, 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 I. Amen. And in the process, amen, God affected him. Sometimes you've got to be a careful what you say out of your mouth. Hey, you got to be careful what you do. He began to walk in the, in the land. Amen. He ate and drank water like a dog. He ate grass. Amen. Nails grew on his fingers. Feathers grew on his back. Amen. He stayed that way for seven years. Amen. And then God delivered him. And when he came out of it, amen, he had a praise. He is the God of all my salvation. I want you to know I'm not going to wait for that to happen to me. I'm going to give God all his glory. I'm not going to steal nothing that does not belong to me. I'm going to give God the best praise I can. I'm going to say thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for keeping me under the blood. Thank you for the car I drive. Thank you for the clothes that are on my back. Thank you for my anointing. You so busy trying to make it about you. 
if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Oh, somebody in here under the sound of my voice has ability to give God a praise because you should be dead right now. But the God I serve. Oh, not even the smell. Amen. Here he is. He finds himself. He comes out of it with a testimony. Amen. If he had not gone through what he was going through, he would not know how to testify the way that he testified. Amen. Not only did he testify, but he was converted. Amen. Sometimes all you have to do is live before people. You don't have to walk around with big buttons on your chest. You don't have to walk around with big signs on your face that says that I'm saved. Your life should prove that you're saved. Amen. The things that you're going through should prove that God is in your life. Oh, I feel like ministering for a little while longer. Here it is. They were understood that when they understood it, they came out with victory. Here, by the time we get to chapter 5, the witnesses of Belshazzar, amen, and the condemnation in contrast to Nebuchadnezzar's conversion in chapter 4, because his rejection of the truth, he does not accept it, amen, Belshazzar begins to reject it. There are going to be folks that are going to reject it, amen, don't worry about it, that's between them and God, it is your responsibility to tell them about what God has done. They really understand that his conversion in chapter 4 because of his rejection of the truth and his blasphemy against God of Israel. Only one day did he serve. Amen. In his life, Belshazzar was not recorded in the scriptures or any other time to announce his condemnation or his death. Amen. Sometimes when you speak negatively, amen, you don't have to pray, amen, for something to happen to somebody. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is just to love everybody, even those that decisively use you and go against you. You are to love them. God has the final say. Amen. Because they're not only attacking you, they're attacking the God that's in you. Oh, I'm understanding and I'm not trying to tell you to be a bully about it, but I'm telling you to just walk in faith. Oh, God, when you walk in favor, he will open doors. Amen. Just understanding that this is the time. As I finally come to chapter 6, and I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. Amen. Chapter 6. Amen. Daniel's uh, life is in danger. Amen. He has experienced God's deliverance time and time again. Once again, in chapter 1, we reveal what Daniel was a part of how he began to rest in the Jewish peers and brought him to a position of prominence. Amen. He was a power in the king of Nebuchadnezzar's administration. As we begin to look at chapter six, it unfolds the the identities. And I want to say there's a what sustained Daniels. When you begin to look at it, you will see the characteristics that helped him through some stuff. Amen. I wish that sometimes I'll be listening to the radio. I listen to Siri, a Kirk Franklin uh, uh, station, or I'll turn, amen, and listen to Pandora, the gospel station, amen, and I'm listening to all of these old songs, and I'll tell you the truth, I turn to Jimmy Swaggin, amen, because they go down and sing some of those old, old, old songs that talk about the blood there, the word, the words meant more than the melody and the music, amen, I'm listening to those songs, trying to get an anointing, but then I realize, amen, that that's just a song. Even though I get some help from it and I get some strength from it, I have to have a relationship with God. Amen. And my relationship is not just built on the keyboard. Amen. Not built on F sharp or A, B or whatever the keys that Junior hits. Amen. My relationship is with fellowship with him. Amen. My prayer life has to be something of special. I've got to learn how to pray. Not only do I have to learn how to pray, I have to learn how to open up his word and study it. Amen. His word makes the difference in our lives. Somebody ought to scream in here. Amen. It does something. We begin to understand that is the substance of Daniel's many years of his ministries enabled him to survive the crises of life. Amen. Faith crises. That's what you want to understand that when you're going through a difficult moment, you've got to have faith. Amen. When hell hounds are chasing you all around, you got to operate in faith. Amen. Sometimes they'll tell you, don't believe it. It's not going to happen. Amen. 
man is not going to go, but God said it, and I'm going to believe it. Here it is, you begin to understand that when they begin to look at it, they begin to see that God is in control. He is a man that operates in faith. He's a man that trusts God as never before. Here it is that when you begin to look at the faith, faith crises, uh, begins at chapter 6 and begins to look verse 18 and runs through verse 28. Amen. It begins to tell you that he says, and the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting and neither were the instruments of music brought before him as sleep went from him. Amen. Even though Daniel was going through hell. Amen. It wouldn't let his enemies sleep. Amen. He had to wake up from whatever he was going through to understand that the God I serve is God. Amen. It ends with verse 28 and it said, and Daniel proposed a reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the, and he begins the Pharisee. I want you to know that there is something that God is about to do in your life. Here it is that when we begin to understand it, it is through faith that Daniel kept moving forward. Amen. God did not keep Daniel out of the den. I want to let you know just because you believe that you're a child of God, that you don't have to go through no storms and you don't have to go through no difficulties. God did not keep him out of the den. Amen. But he went with him in the den. Hey, yes, sir. I praise him for keeping me. I praise him for opening doors for me. I praise him that no matter what storm that I went in, oh God, that the God I serve brought me out out of it. I'm so grateful for God's mercy. I'm so grateful that every experience that I've ever been through, uh, that God has gone with me. I heard Brother David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the channel of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. He protects him. He protects him in the lion's den. Why are you saying, why did he protect him? Why did he cover him in the den? It's because Daniel had faith in the Lord. Amen. When you begin to read, oh God, verse 23, and it said, And then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den, and now no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. I've come to give you a word. I believe that the God I serve has the ability to bring us out. No matter how tough the situation, no matter how difficult the storm, he rocks us in the cradle of his arm. He has the ability to bring us out. However, he begins to talk about it. And he begins to tell us that he's not the only one. I heard in the book of Hebrews, somewhere around the 11th chapter, he said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. For by the elders obtain a good report that even faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Amen. By the word of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4. And it said, by faith, Abel, amen, was able, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice, amen, than Cain, by which he obtained, O oh God, a witness of his righteousness, and God testified of his gifts, and by his bringing, yet dead, yet he speaks. I've come to give you a word. There's some faith walkers, amen, in here that's been going through hell and high water, but the God I serve is about to bring you out of it. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. I want you to know that your testimony, your trials and your tribulation, amen, is God's handiwork that's going to bring you out of the storm. Amen. We find that when he begins to look at it, amen, begins to read the word and faithful is to him was the Lord. Amen. He begins to read and you can take it to Psalms 
18. Amen. When you begin to run and look at it, when you have time, you can start at verse 17. And it said, and he delivered me from my, my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. The demons that you're wrestling with, the trouble that you're going through may be too strong for you. But I heard somebody said, where two or three gathered together, touching and agreeing that the Lord would be in the midst. I've come to give you a word. You're not by yourself. There's some prayer warriors that's going to help you through your storm. I know they're trying to kill you, but God has already given you victory. I see it in your future that you're going to walk into the anointing, that you're going to walk into the promise, that you're going to walk into the breakthrough. I see favor following you through your storm. Amen. He begins perhaps, amen, to think about how Daniel meditated. Amen. He meditated on the word. Too often we try to call other folk on the phone, trying to get them to say a word that was going to give us some strength. But I hear there's power in the word. Amen. I heard there's anointing in the word. I heard that David Daniel about to turn to Psalms 37 and said, fret not thyself because of evil doers and neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. I want you to know that the people had set a trap for Daniel. They thought that if they could stop him from praying, they knew he was going to pray. They knew that he was going to cry out and they got the king to make a decree that anybody praying to any other God except for Darius was going to die in the lion's den. But Daniel said, I know it's the law. I know it's what they tell you, but I can't do that. Amen. That's sin. I got to keep on praying because he read in Chronicles somewhere around 14. He said that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. You got to know that Solomon in the sixth chapter began to pray to God and tell him, Lord, I need you to watch over my folk. Even when they're caught out and brought into captivity, I want you to watch over them. I God, my God, and God I'll share. Solomon was praying until the anointed answer came back from God. He said, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, then will I heal their land. I'm talking about the church today. If you need healing of your land, healing of your environment, you got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to cry loud and spare not. Lift your voice like trumpet in Zion. You're looking at me crazy because all I need to do is call a good song service or call some entertainer that would come in this house. But the word is what keeps you. The word is what blesses you. You got to have it in your soul. You got to learn how to cry loud and spare not. I feel an anointed. You going through some hell, but the God I serve is about to bring you out. I need a prayer warrior. I need a praiser that'll join in with me and say we're coming out. We're dealing with all the stuff. We're coming out. I'm leaving 21 behind and I'm walking in favor. Favor. Let the favor of God move your mind. I got favor. It's in my hands. It's in my feet. I got favor. It's in my bank account. I got favor. Oh my God. I need somebody that agree with me. 2022. I'm walking in the favor of God. When I walk in the room, they're going to say, hey, Mr. Reed. When I leave the door, they're going to open it for me. You got to give God a praise. Oh, I'm 
walking in the favor of God. Hallelujah. Uh, the word is full of promise for the believers. The word of God is full of promise. Hallelujah. Amen. The God we serve. Amen. It's going to open a door for you. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Look at somebody say, they're going to take my place in what I've been going through because God is bringing me out. Uh, I was just sitting here thinking when I was a child uh, we didn't get to play the games that we played in the south they were different games we would uh, either they would take a circle and they would draw it with your finger they put some marbles in it and every marble that you hit with your piece and it went out the circle, you could keep it. Am I right about it? Uh, now, who, who's older than 35? <laughs> that was a game down here in the South. Amen. That was a game, and you could keep your piece. You could take your piece and pull it out. At the end of it, after you knocked everybody else's off, you get to keep your peace and all the pieces that you've got. In the city, we ain't have no dirt to make a circle in. So we played tag. You'd be it. You'd run behind somebody. And as I got smarter, I didn't learn to keep on running because they chase you as long as you was running on flat surface. I'd get in, around a car and just run around the car. Because there's no way in the world he's going to catch me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But there comes a time when they do catch you. 